Andrew's book, as well as his previous work, his previous writing on work, is unique, almost unique these days. And what I think is so interesting and so important about this book, and why it is in some ways instructive to all of us, is that and, and, is that people in sociology and in cultural studies and in political science and anthropology and psychology, we always like to study down, much more comfortable. Andrew studies us <laughs> in the largest possible sense. His, his book, No Color, is a study of people who do creative work and finally find themselves fucked. Uh, be, and this one has a certain affiliation with that, although it's a quite a different book. It's not primarily ethnographic, it's analytic, and it's, it's brilliant. Uh, but what I think is important about what Andrew's book in some sense represents in addition to its intrinsic qualities is that we, he, he highlights what our friends from NYU Graduate School have been talking about, which is that precarious labor is not about alone, immigrants, poor people, day laborers, and so on. Precarious labor is the fate of many of us who are in the position of having to look for work these days. Many of us who have work and will lose it. And I don't think that that excludes virtually anybody in this room. Because the restructuring of graduate education and the restructuring of the work situation, which is not only a function of globalization, but as a function of a very deep crisis in the system, which is called capitalism, by the way, um, is, is, is now universal. The people that run the setup, that run the setup have a great difficulty, except for the banks and, and, and corporate executives at a certain level, of protecting even the ones that they count as cadre. And that's really what Andrew was talking about. He's saying creative labor is precarious. Whereas at one point, creative labor for the system of the 90s, the dot-com boom, was uh, the thing to be, and everybody thought they were going to make out like bandits. Creative labor now is becoming largely universalized among many people, and it's becoming just the same as everybody else, contingent, temporary, often part-time, and he talks about this in great detail. The one thing that I want to say about this book, which is in many ways uh, exceptional, uh, apart from the originality of the, um, of the analysis itself, is that social scientists would not have written this book, with certain exceptions. Generally speaking, this kind of work, which is, which is, which, which is synoptic, as well as detailed, which is not ethnographic, primarily, which is analytic, is not what social science these days is about. Social science is keeping its nose to the grindstone and trying as best as possible to keep out of the way of politics and cultural transformation. Andrew does not keep out of the way. He puts his uh, foot and his, and his whole body in, and this is what this book essentially does. The other thing that's, I think, rather important